Welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box underneath in your YouTube player. And for access to exclusive live streams, worksheets, and other quick tip video lessons, you can find me on Patreon slash Eric Haugen Guitar. Now to the lesson. All right, let us investigate. By the way, this is yeah, off of Neil Young's Revolution Blues from On the Beach. Now, I put this little intro in to illustrate some things. Let's look at it. I'm on the G string, so this is key of A minor. I was like, let's, hey, let's try and explain this, Eric. 54202 oh, is my melody. I was like, dear audience, you can harmonize things like this thirds above, which gives us, yeah, that five and five, four and three, two and one, zero and zero, to give us that. So typically a harmony is a third above. The thing this lesson is really trying to explain is that sixes are weird because they actually harmonize below your target melody note. That's why the next thing that happens is is that because that is now taking I'm now taking that same thing but harmonizing it this E here is six notes below one two three four five six down zero and zero and yes I am hybrid picking did actually have to skip it because I was trying to get to an E sus4 we'll discuss in a moment. So that gives me a six there that's two. Uh, that's our B with our open G. And then here's a big E sus4 which is uh, you know if you took an E and snuck your pinky underneath to that second fret of the G gives us that. And here's the main riff of Revolution Blues. So that's off A minor. You just got a pinky out there on that uh, third fret to get a sus4 on that. So then I was like, allow me to illustrate. This is also how I like to practice. Do a chord and then use the idea that you're playing around with. So groove, fill, groove, lick, groove, sixth, groove, thirds, groove, well, I don't know what else. Um, so there I am playing around with this idea of that is still, still playing around with that sixth below this target tone. Just playing around with that little partial of the minor scale that I've harmonized a sixth below. And this time I'm landing it proper on um, a sixth here. That our melody note is that A, and our sixth below is our C, which, if I flipped it, is a third above. Yeah, it's like that. You got a third above, hey, that's nice, that's a nice harmony. Or you can take that same note, 
drop it down, and it's a sixth below. That's the um, interplay between sixes and thirds, why they both sound good. <laughs> Like, let me go up those notes. Same thing, just going up. Two and zero. And notice I'm doing a very Nashville kind of thing. Instead of going together, you get a lot more mileage. Watch the hybrid picking here. To get more notes out of what is essentially not a lot. Here comes an F. I do a big sus2 on there, and I can do that because I like to do my chords. Also, this Starfire actually has a kind of narrow uh, neck. It's interesting. Uh, so I can get my thumb around easily enough to get an F. This is how Neil Young does his F anyway. And I can get that um, middle finger out. I like that sound. Come back to that F. I'm like, oh, let me do some sixes in the minor scale that go down. So if I was thinking, well, then I'm going to go. I hope it's starting to click in there. One and two. Again, there's a gap. Zero and zero. Three and three. Back to the thing. And then I'm like, okay. Uh, What's next? Oh, there's going to be a D minor. And then I, so I want to illustrate that, well, I like to do things in the open position a lot. I think it's an under-explored area of guitar because it doesn't look, it doesn't look awesome to play awesome stuff out of the open position, but it sounds awesome. But I want to illustrate, I can do the same thing up high or moving into a fifth position structure if I wanted to. So I go, let's see. Harmonize it. Again, knowing my minor scale this way, knowing it this way too. So so I, I know my minor scales, my A minor, or all of them really, in all places. I don't, I don't, yeah, I do. So it's not so crazy for me to find. There's my melody, harmonize it a six below, see the scale on two strings at the same time. Three and three, five and five. Here's a D minor at our fifth fret. That's a cool chord, uh, seven sus four. Five, seven, five, eight. Almost sounds like it's been a hard day's night. Anyway. Now I'm going to play with those sixes off of this guy here, looking for them, how they relate now to that key, but to this shape. There they are, five, six, five, 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 three. And now I think I just did a little, just a little fill on there. Just, and then I'm back to, I'm like, well, I'm not going to go down here to my A minor same thing in that zone. Uh, so zero, seven, seven. There they are again. This time instead of, instead of there or they're up here. It's based out of this very safe and comfortable structure that gives us there's our melody again. The melody when you're doing the sixes, again, it's the, it's the higher note. The sixth is the weirdo that's lurking behind and underneath. Eight, nine, five and five. Sorry, seven and seven, five and five. And then if I have time, I don't remember, a blues fill off of that. That's out of A blues, because, you know, A blues and A minor. They're cousins. Here comes an F chord. Cage structure of F. Uh, eight, seven, five, six. But I'm only going to be doing that, that portion. If I don't bother with the root, I'm like, let me illustrate to my viewers what I might do with that. There's a six. There's a 
here's the next ones, eight and eight. No, sorry, ten and ten. Again, again, that's seeing the scale. So ten and ten. Oh, that's an interesting one. Nine, eight, and then I just did a weirdo, Bill Frizzell. Kind of using, again, I like it at open strings, so using the open strings to do a, a line off of what is essentially going to be an E chord. <laughs> Good job, Eric. Okay, so that is um, six on that B, open E, uh, three on the B, five, open. That's our first part. So you really are just getting, which is, you know, would sound like that, but when you use weirdo open strings, things will bump into each other in a, in a more unpredictable um, and interesting way. So that's our first half, and then we're, we're seeing this E chord. Yeah, I'm just, again, seeing a, but at this point it's really a, a harmonic minor scale. 2 1. Wait, now I have to play it. Yeah. And then kind of like my hand just did this. Is what it ended up doing there. So that's an E7. 2 1. There's our G sharp, our leading tone of the key. And then back to our riff. I think I did. That's a yeah, great little blues fill there. And I think I did it as it's fading, which is yeah, just accident. That was five, five, three, which is kind of a C. And then I made it into a G. Just because I was like, ooh, that sounds kind of cool, and I don't know what that reminded me of, but it sounded cool, and it just keeps fading out. No problem. So to review the principles of what a sixth is, you have a main melody. Typically, you would harmonize, okay, but here's our melody. Typically, you would harmonize that with a note that's a third above. And that's, that's a very nice thing to do. Now, that same note that's a third above, if you drop it an octave, now it's a sixth below. So they actually, that's why sonically they're very similar. They both have that pleasing quality. And so this, this little exercise was utilizing a minor scale, the A minor scale, and instead of just doing a one note fill, I would put a sixth underneath to move through it that way. And you know, it's a cool Neil Young, Neil Young song to work on as well. Neil Young, that would be a kind of funny band name. Anyway, take your time with it, think it through, um, and have fun.